Now, let's just talk simplistically for a moment about how we stabilize the system. If a lens camera jolts, moves, vibrates, the light rays emanating from the output of the lens onto the imager shift on the face of that camera imager. So we're going to correct that. We have to sense the movement of the lens, then engage a system that puts in an optical correction to deflect the light rays back to where they should be. That's the essence of optical stabilization in the lens. The reasons Canon likes optical stabilization in the lens, threefold really, with high definition television. You're dealing with very large screens and very high resolution imagery. So any instability in the lens and camera is going to mar that terrific image. Second, in the two-third inch lenses and cameras, the two-third inch lens camera interface is still the only globally standardized interface, which means that all of the major lens manufacturers making two-third inch high definition lenses and all of the world's camera manufacturers making two-third inch high definition cameras and camcorders can mix and match. The customer can choose any lens, anybody's camera, and know that they will couple together to make an imaging system. So there's a compelling reason to uh, take a lens and fix any instability in the lens that can be coupled to any camera which may or may not have electronic correction. That's a big advantage. And by making the correction in the lens, we stabilize both the primary video output of the camera itself, but equally important, we also stabilize the video, the separate video path that goes up to the uh, electronic viewfinder of these cameras and camcorders. That's a big advantage. Starting in the mid-1980s, Canon embarked on two approaches to image stabilization in the lens. And the two approaches were really to try and optimize the performance, the correction performance, for the sort of wide range of lenses that we have. We have the portable lenses that we'll be talking about today, which can be handheld, subject to fairly large amplitude movements. So one of our technologies was focused on optimizing the correction of that. On the other hand, we have uh, field lenses used for sports with ever increasing focal lengths. We talk about 100 to 1 zooms today. And they're usually mounted on tripods, but can be subject to vibrations, et cetera, lower amplitudes, slightly higher frequencies. And another optical system was developed for that. We call that the shift lens, where we move a lens elements, some elements at the back of the, uh, of the lens. That works very well for long zoom. But for the portable lens that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about the technology of variable angle prism image stabilization. What do I mean by a variable angle prism? Well, in the world of optics, there has long been known uh, the wedge prism. And the wedge prism is where, as I show in this diagram, the two faces of the prism are at an angle to each other. That angle can be vertical, as I show in this first diagram. And when it's vertical like that, a light ray entering that prism will come out deflected vertically. It can be deflected down or deflected up, depending on the angle of that tilt of that wedge prism. Or as shown in this second diagram, that wedge prism can be horizontally oriented. The two faces might be tilted this way or tilted that way. In which case, the light ray entering the prism will come out deflected horizontally. Now, if we could implement a prism where we can dynamically move these faces of the prism, we then have a dynamic control over the deflection of the light rays. That's the essence of the variable angle prism. The implementation, however, is something else. That's a saga of some very deep R&D to develop something that would work in a very compact optical subsystem.